Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Journey of Faith. My name is Krista Reyna. I'm one of the pastors here on staff of the church. Thank you so much. You guys are really exciting this morning. I can hear you singing back there. It was wonderful. Um, if you're joining us online, it's really wonderful to have you joining us in that way. If it's your first time here in person, um, we would love to connect with you after the message today outside in the lobby. I've been thinking about you guys a lot this week and just about how I pray and I I hope that today's message and, and the worship and just the entire experience here draws you closer to God and that you learn something about yourself and God this morning that just helps you be more like Jesus in your lives because that's our, our goal is to be like Jesus. We are in the third week of a series called Be Well, um, where we're talking about true wellness is found in Jesus. Last week, Pastor Jason spoke with us about food and how food is a good gift from God. And the lesson or the message I wanna share with you this morning ties really well into that. We're gonna be talking about our mind and body. You see, we were created to be whole beings. God cares equally about our mind, our mental health, and our body, our physical health. He doesn't differentiate them from one another. One of the challenges that many of us face in this area, though, is we tend to see the body as all bad, or we see our mind as all bad. For example, some of you might feel like my body is bad because it doesn't look a certain way, or I have an illness in my body, and that makes my body bad. What I want to share with you today is God doesn't see us that way. God doesn't see us in an extreme where we think we're all bad or all good. God sees us as whole beings. So to be totally transparent with you this morning, and I do want to share that I am one of those people that tends to have a lot of like all good or all bad thinking. With a lot of things in my life, this just seeps into my life. And I want to share with you a story of how I manage my all good and my all bad thinking and how that ties into our story today that I'll be sharing with you. So um, I, I want to tell you, I love crocheting. I love, I love yarn. Um, I enjoy the texture of yarn. I like the names that are assigned to different colors of yarn. Just a really fun hobby for me. And so at the beginning of the year, I decided that I was going to crochet a 2024 temperature blanket. Now, the last time I preached, some of you may recall that I shared a story with you about my baby blanket, whose name was Itchy. Um, I, I do have other experiences in my life that just happen to be something about the spiritual life and blankets that really speak to me. So stick with me here. Um, I do have other, other experiences besides blankets. Anyway, all that to say. Um, here, I want to tell you a little bit about what it temperature blanket is. So you can see here I have a color chart and I have it here with me as well. And so based on the temperature for any given day, I crochet a row in that color. So at the end of the year, 365, 366 days, whatever it might be, I have a whole blanket and it represents the weather throughout the year. So this very first one you can see is 50 to 54. If that's a high temperature for the day, I crochet midnight blue. This is really rare in Southern California. Um, some, some areas in the country, people will crochet things like they have to have a color for negative temperatures. Like we don't have that here, um, which is really nice. And then, you know, I've got the greens. Um, now let me show you a picture of my blanket. I took this on Wednesday. This is very, yeah, this is like what our temperature is like. It's almost all the same, right? We don't have a lot of differentiation, but I want to point out to you something because there is a problem with this blanket. This right here, this is six rows of dark green, and I accidentally crocheted the wrong shade of green for those days. It was, suppo yeah, it was supposed to be succulent green, and I chose hosta green. Now, I know, for some of you, you're like, oh, that's fine, that's not a big deal. But for me, and the way that my mind works and my mind operates, I thought the whole blanket was bad. Like, I wanted to scrap the whole project and just throw it away and be like, yeah, I'll start again next year. I have this experience with a lot of things in my life. I think this way when I was like in grad school. I would write a paper, and if I didn't get a perfect score or a nearly perfect score, all bad. 
Like, this paper's trash. Why do they even bother? I also feel this way when it comes to things that deal with my mind and my body. And I know that some of you are that way as well. You see your body as all bad or all good or your mind is all good or your mind is all bad. But I want to share with you this morning that Jesus, God, doesn't see us that way. God sees us as whole beings. And he wants us to to connect with him, to integrate ourselves into more of a wholeness in our lives. So please don't mishear me. I'm not saying that we shouldn't strive for perfection or want to have good things and do well at things. Um, That means we should have good health. We should seek good health in our lives. We should exercise. We should want to have our temperature blankets to be the the colors that God intended for them to be. Um, Those are good things. (laughs) Those are good things. But this blanket, regardless of my mess up, is still good. It is still woven together in a unique way. Like there is no other temperature blanket in the whole entire world that's like mine. And this mess up of the blanket was really fortuitous, I think, for giving this message today. Because this is how God sees us. God sees us as unique and woven together and beautiful. In fact, I want to share this verse with you. It's from the the Old Testament book of Psalms. It's Psalm 139. And the psalmist says, You, God, made all the delicate inner parts of my body. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Can you hear these words? Can you see them on the screen? And can you believe that God has made you wonderful? God has made you complex. Here on the next slide, I want to show you the the main idea for today. Based on that verse, it says we can live in the truth that Jesus loves our mind and body. Because just like the verse said, we are wonderfully made. God makes us whole. Now, there isn't a specific verse in the Bible where Jesus says like, oh, I love your mind and I love your body. But when we look at the whole of Jesus's ministry while he was here on earth, we see that it is very clear that he did love our mind and body. In fact, today I'm gonna share a story with you that is probably one of Jesus's most profound and just incredible miracles. It's where he raises his friend Lazarus from the dead. You can find it here in your Bibles. It's John 11, one through 44. I won't read all of the verses for you today, um, but I am going to read a fair amount of them, so stick with me. Because when we read this story in, in its wholeness, um, play on words, when you read this story all together, we really do see what Jesus thinks about us, how he cherishes us so much. Please go read this on your own, because you'll see in the story there's examples of friendship and love and kindness and empathy. And what we'll see is that it also teaches us something about the glory of God. We'll be talking about that a little bit more as we go along. So let's go ahead and start reading. Uh, The very first verse says, a man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Pastor Jason is gonna talk about that story next week, so come back for that. Um, But their brother, Lazarus, was sick. So the two sisters, they sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. What John, the author of this story, is trying to teach us here is that Jesus and Mary and Martha and Lazarus, they were good friends. They cared about one another. They loved one another. And the reason that Mary and Martha had to send a message was because Jesus at this point in his ministry was about a day's travel away from where they were. Let's continue reading. It says, when Jesus heard about it, about Lazarus' sickness, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. Jesus is referring to himself here as the Son of God. And basically he's saying, I am going to do something that is so incredible. And when it happens, you will see the glory and the goodness of God. Let's continue on. 
It says, so although Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Now this is, this kind of upset me when I read this because it's like, wait, Jesus, you loved them? So you stayed? Like Jesus made them wait? I mean, that doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense to me. Keep in mind, it took the messenger one day to find Jesus, and then it took Jesus two days before he even traveled back. So it was four days before he got back to Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Jesus sometimes has us in those seasons of waiting. I imagine Mary and Martha were probably feeling all kinds of things like sadness or wondering where Jesus was. We don't have that in our modern society. We can pretty much find out where somebody is in just like a minute or two. We don't have to wait, but they did. And I wanna tell you, there are seasons in our life where we are waiting on something. Maybe it's four days or, or four weeks or four months, whatever it is where we wait. Know that just as Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, he loves you so much. And he's there with you in the waiting. Let's keep reading. It says, when Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. And when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him and Martha said, Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then Mary arrives. And when she saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. The faith that these women have in the fact that Jesus could make their brother whole is just profound to me. That is the kind of of faith that Jesus wants us to have in him when we choose to follow him and put our trust in him. The next verse says, "When er, when Jesus saw her weeping and he saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. And then Jesus wept. Like Jesus cried. Jesus was in this moment and he is today. He is God. He is Lord of Lords. And he feels and experiences emotions just like we do because Jesus is a human being. When we have those moments where we feel like, oh, this this feeling is too deep know that Jesus experienced those same kind of emotions. One thing that sticks out to me in the story is what Jesus didn't say to them. He didn't say, Mary, Martha, like, don't cry. Pull yourself together. Lazarus is in a better place. No, he got in there with them with their deep emotions. He felt what they felt. Remember, our main idea for today is that Jesus loves our body and mind. And here's our first, first point. We can embrace the use of our complex emotions. Sometimes we have this view of the spiritual life that it should just be like an even thing, that we shouldn't have deep feelings or difficult feelings. But we can see from the story that that is not what Jesus called us to. Jesus called us to have emotions. Jesus is showing us here that emotions are good and important. And you are created by God, just like the Psalm 139 said, you are created by God to be complex. You were created by God to feel things. God wove you together. In fact, here's something I want you to try this week. This week, I want you to invite Jesus more into your emotional and mental health. Some of you do need to embrace your feelings and be like, okay, I feel something right now and that's okay. Some of you are in a place where you have a lot of negative thoughts and a lot of negative feelings. And you need to ask Jesus to help you move more towards a place of of goodness and positivity in your thinking. Not like that we would just be positive for the sake of being positive, but that Jesus would actually help you move out of those dark spaces in your mind. Some of you have experienced trauma in your life and that affects your thinking today. I can tell you that Jesus wants you to not only talk with him, 
Jesus probably wants you to talk with a trusted friend or counselor or maybe a pastor here on staff. Jesus is with you in those moments and he is there to help you understand your emotions. And we would love to walk alongside you in that time. Maybe Jesus is inviting you more into an intentional time of prayer with him. Like I wanna share with you something that has really helped me in my spiritual life and in my mental life and it's called breath prayer. Breath prayer is where you take a piece of scripture and you breathe the words in and out as you pray and you speak to God. And I wanna try that here with us this morning. Um, We don't normally breathe together in church, but I would love to have the opportunity just so you can feel what that's like. You don't have to say the words out loud. You can say them in the quietness of your heart. Um, But for the next few moments, we're gonna breathe. Let me show you the verse that we're talking about. Um, Remember the verse we started with, you God made all the delicate inner parts of my body. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. You can take that verse and you can pray something as simple as this. As you inhale, you can say, God, you created me. And then as you exhale, I am wonderfully complex. So let's try this together. You can close your eyes if you want. You can open your palms as kind of a symbolic gesture that you surrender your mind to God. And let's try this. I'll guide you through one breath, and then then you'll do a couple of breaths on your own. Let's find our breath. And as you inhale deeply, say in the quietness of your heart, God, you created me. And as you exhale, I am wonderfully complex. Let's breathe. uh, Breathe that prayer right now on your own. Inhale. And exhale. Right now, some of you are feeling like that is the first deep breath you've taken all day. Maybe all week, all month, I don't know what it is. But know that God has given you this tool, this breath to help you in your life, to help guide you through your emotions, to help guide you through situations. You can come back to this anytime you want. Now we've talked about how Jesus cares about our mind. Let's finish up the story and look at how Jesus also cares about our body, our physical wellness. Let's go to the next verse. It says, Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. It was a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. And Jesus said, roll the stone aside. But Martha, the dead man's sister protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. I love how the Bible just brings in, it's a full sensory experience. Um, So just imagine what that might've been at that point. But Jesus responded and he said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. And then Jesus looked up to heaven and he said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. And then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. This is wild. Like (laughs) Lazarus was in the grave for four days and Jesus spoke and he emerged from this tomb. Like if you're new to faith and you're new to church and you're like, this makes no sense. Yeah, I know it doesn't make any earthly sense. But Jesus did these miracles and these signs to show us that the power that Jesus used to raise Lazarus from the grave, that power is within us when we accept Jesus into our lives. That power lives within us. After this point, as as Lazarus came out, it says the dead man came out and his hands and feet were bound in grave clothes and his face was wrapped in a headcloth and Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. And many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen. 
Let's go back to a quote that I really wanna focus on for this last portion. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Isn't it interesting, once again, what Jesus didn't say? Jesus didn't say, Lazarus is in the grave, his body was bad, and now he's in a better place. Lazarus didn't say that, you know, uh, Lazarus, or Jesus didn't say that Lazarus' body was bad and that Lazarus was kind of bound by the things of this world, and now he's free of those things. No, what Jesus is saying here, that when he called Lazarus from the grave and Lazarus rose, Jesus is saying his physical body is good and he is well and he is alive and that shows the goodness of God. Jesus is connecting the glory of God with Lazarus's physical body. Here's our second point for today. Uh, We can use our bodies for God's glory. Here's what the beautiful thing is. When, When Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave and he said, be healed, it's in this healing that glory comes to God. The goodness of God is shown. Some of us think that our body is bad because it doesn't work a certain way or it doesn't look perfect the way we deem a perfect body should look. But Jesus is saying here, I do, I want you to be healthy. I want you to see your body as a good thing because that is what is going to bring me glory. Jesus calls our names and it's almost like he's calling us out of the grave because he wants to unwrap us from the things that that bind us in this life, that keep us from being whole. Here's an action step. I want you to choose, you can choose this week to give God glory by taking care of your physical health. What does this look like? I feel like there's a, a range, right? So for some people, giving God glory this week through your body is going outside and getting some sunshine feeling the sun on your face, maybe drinking some water, um, doing that breath prayer that we just did. That is one way. For some of you, it's a little bit more serious than that. Not serious, but it's a little, more, little bigger than that. It's like you need to start exercising. You need to start a formal exercise plan. Jesus wants that for you. He wants you to be well. Some of you need to make an appointment to see a doctor. Like, you don't need to raise your hand in the room, but I know there are some of you sitting here who are like, oh, I've seen the doctor in a while. What, and you probably have like that nagging feeling. of like, oh, that doesn't feel right. Or, ooh, I should probably talk to the doctor about that. Yes, that is God showing you that you are wonderfully, intricately made. And those are like little whispers from God. Hey, go to the doctor. He wants you to do that. And I want to tell you, God is with you in those moments. He's with you when you make the appointment. He's with you when you arrive there. He's with you. So do do these things this week. Choose to give God glory by taking care of your mind and body. Is there an area of your life that you just kind of feel like, you know what? This part of my life, it's not whole. Whatever that might be, Please invite Jesus into it. Now, we're going to close service in just a minute. Um, We're going to close a little bit differently than we normally do. So please stick with me here in the room. Um, Before we close, I do want to share with you just kind of what we talked about today. Our main idea was we can live in the truth that Jesus loves our mind and body. We can embrace the use of our complex emotions, and we can use our bodies for God's glory. At this time, I'm going to invite the band back out. We're going to sing a song together. A lot of times we do sing a song at the very end of service, and we use that time as a time of contemplation, connection with God, where we think about the things we've learned. We're going to take that one step further this morning. I'm going to invite a couple of our pastors and some people from our prayer team to come forward into the front. And they're going to be up here while we're singing to pray with any one of you that feels like you are looking for some kind of wholeness and healing or whatever it is in your life that you would like someone to pray with you. The song that we're going to sing, I want to share just the first four four lyrics with you while the band and the prayer team gets in place. The song that we're, we're going to sing is called Broken Vessels. 
And the reason we chose this and the reason we love this song so much is because at the beginning it says, all these pieces, broken and scattered, in mercy gathered, mended and whole. This is what Jesus does for us. He takes all of the pieces of our life that are broken or scattered, that aren't whole, and he gathers them in his mercy and he mends us. It is a, a beautiful, glorious thing. So if there is something in your life that you would like prayer for, please come forward in a few moments. And I wanna say if you're sitting here today and you're like, you know what, I feel good. Like I feel like my mind feels good, my body feels good. Please be in, well, first of all, thank God for that. And then please be in prayer for those around you because if somebody doesn't come forward for prayer, it doesn't mean that they don't need some kind of healing in their life. We belong to one another. And one of the gifts that we can give to each other is this gift of praying for one another. I wanna say that ultimate healing and ultimate wholeness will come when Jesus returns someday. In that moment, we will be complete like we've never known it before. But while you're here on earth, God wants you to live a full and complete life. He wants you to be well. So you can come forward um, anytime during this song. If you're in the balcony, we have plenty of time. You can come on down um, to the front of the auditorium. But let's stand together. You can stand, you can sing, you can come forward for prayer whenever, whenever you'd like. And then I'll come back at the end of service to close us out.